1860, as far as I can find, UK first commercial dog biscuit. This was actually um, was created by this person who was watching um, sailors giving dog food or biscuits, their own biscuits, okay, to dogs on a ship because there's nothing else to do. Then they came out and said, okay, there must be something more they can give dog biscuits apart from our own biscuits. So he came up with a formula to include all that what he felt was needed by a dog and that was first given from that idea, started from a ship. Then in UK, that's when it first came to business, whereby he said, okay, let's do something more specific about it. Then it started, suddenly grew from there to say that there's actually food that you can give four dogs, uh, made four dogs, rather than just a bit of human food, a bit of biscuit, and things like that. Then after that, in 1890, US was introduced to the above formula. It was brought over to US. So actually UK started a whole commercial dog food um, business, so to speak. And after that, canned dog food was introduced in 1922, okay, about sort of 30, 35 years later. It was ma mainly horse meat at the point of time because at the point of time it was still uh, sort of a, um, not determined but belief that, you know, horse meat, there's a huge surplus, so good for dogs, so to speak. Obviously, these days, the thoughts of having a horse, horse ownership has changed quite a bit. 1960, so almost a good, you know, 100 years later, almost. Then we talk about unique nutritional care for puppies, formulated. Mid 80s, the US National Research Council actually published nutritional requirements on what should be in a dog food. How much protein, how much fats, how much um, carbohydrates, uh, calcium, phosphorus, all those sort of little things. They actually publish something out there rather than just yeah, I think the dog needs a bit of that, a bit of that, and it's doing fine, so let's continue with it. So this is actually the first time, in, only in the mid-80s. So it's not that, that, sort of uh, long ago, that they actually made something about dog food. 93, a bath diet study in Australia. So this was founded by a vet, okay? And the, the, the idea behind it was because he, he, they were feeding raw feed to uh, performance uh, uh, dogs, like greyhounds. So they're saying, okay, that is actually quite, uh, it achieved quite a good result in terms of um, the activity in greyhound racing and things like that. So I said, okay, maybe there is something to do with, to, uh, that, that we can implement in pet dogs. And bath, uh, by the way, stands for sort of a, it, you, it was originally bones and raw food. But after that, a few years later, they've changed it to biologically appropriate raw feed. So it's still bath, but yeah, there you go. So let's talk a little about dry food. How is it made? Very simple question, how is it made? This process called extrusion, okay? Um, I have you can Google the word to find out exactly what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> but extrusion basically is saying that, okay, now that we know what needs to be in the food because of the guidelines that set up for us and whatever they want to put in there, like a bit of meat, uh, vegetables, all this sort of thing, how do you make it into a kibble? A uniform kibble. So what they have to do is that because you can't just mix everything together in a blender and hope for the best. So they actually have to heat up the food, heat up those ingredients so that they um, will break down or to be mushed up, then go through this huge grinder. Then when it comes up, it slowly chops into the shape that you want it to be chopped in. So that is how extrusion is, uh, that's how dried up food is formed. It has to involve in some sort of heat. So usually it is 3 to 11% water, depending on which brand you go for. It's a huge market leader. It is of all the food available, the market leader. So it's 8 billion worth sold in 2010. And this in America. So the advantage of that is that it's convenient, it's cheap, and it's quite energy dense because you're actually packing whatever you need to pack into that kibble. So you don't, you don't give a lot to give a lot of energy because it's all been artificially packed in. Okay? Uh, and it's cheap because you can produce in bulk. And it's convenient because it is dry. Even if, uh, so you don't have to put it in the fridge and you don't have any extra storage and sometimes it's not unusual for people to just pop into a huge bin and just, and just take a bit out and calculate it. Calculation is easy. 
uh, you can you can you know, weigh how many grams and they're all the same. So it's not as though you're weighing different bits of different food you need 20 grams of that, 50 grams of that. It's all just one uniform kibble. So the disadvantage is that um, sometimes uh, it's not that tasty because it is just a dried biscuit. Um, there's a high grain level because that is also what they believe that is needed to constitute the shape in the first place. So it's huge high grain level. They have to put some preservatives inside there because um, of the other food that they put inside there. So more than likely there's always some form of preservative because you cannot have a fresh food that stays untarnished for a very long time. Another disadvantage that we have is that don't forget we talk about extrusion. Okay, so which means that it's been heated up quite fairly high temperatures, usually about 170 degrees. Okay. In that heat you can lose a lot of nutrients. So what they think as okay, the whole idea of adding this particular ingredient because you have got the vitamin C or calcium, once you hit to that level, you may not get the same amount when you actually make it in the kibble. So that is one uh, consideration to think of. <laughs> so it is uh, interesting on how they come up with the shape of the kibble. Um, and every dog is different. Like what about wet food? How is it made? It's heated to sterilize to at least 77 degrees Celsius, mix all the ingredients together, and then sometimes they add on gel, like for the jelly, to get the consistency of that. Um, it's more water compared to 3 to 11 percent in dry food, it's 60 to 78 percent in wet food. Okay. Uh, and basically, it is, it's quite interesting also reading about that. And they were just basically everything is heated together in this huge vet pot, okay? So 77 degrees. So it's all mixed together. Then, after that, what they do is that they actually lay it down on a flat surface. So it's about an inch thick. It's almost like a sheet. Then, after that, they make sure that it's all heated up properly again to make sure everything is cooked properly and mixed properly. Then they start packaging into whatever packet they, they, they get. So it is a uh, yeah, it's almost like fixing little jellies, so to speak, into the packs. Yep. And uh, like I say, it's huge, huge percentage of water. It's been arguable to say that the difference between wet food and dry food is that for the wet food you just add some water. So in terms of cost, as you can imagine, it isn't as energy dense, okay, uh, because of um, it is a uh, it is a lot of water inside there. So advantages is that it's highly pal uh, palatable. It's uh, dogs tend to like wet food a bit more. It's just like us. You like to eat something with your food. It's not just dry um, whatever food you're eating. You know, a bit of gravy and a bit of soup, a bit of moisture. It's nice rather than just water. Yep. So it's uh, more palatable. It's usually quite high in protein. The way they mix it. Okay. The disadvantage is that you need higher volume because it's not as energy dense. So comparatively, you may need 100 grams of kibble, but you need 400 grams of wet food. It's your personal energy dense. Um, it's more expensive, and uh, arguably you're paying more for water <laughs> because it's more water. So arguably, I've certainly heard of this analogy before. Not exactly right, but to an extent true, is that um, if you have dry food, you add some water. That's wet food. But you pay more for wet food because you literally pay more for water. Okay, and the uh, and the packaging has to be more specific as well. Dry food comes in bags of 15 kilos or even bigger. Wet food is always built in kind of too much wet food together because it's got high spoilage. You cannot just, it doesn't keep as fresh as, uh, as uh, dry food. And it's also linked to wet, uh, weight gain. So uh, they've found that you know, if you feed more wet food, they tend to put on more weight. Okay? Whether it is due to the owner's perception, they say, I need to give you more. Or the water content compared to, the, to dry food. You just get a bit more so we came really.